Cezanne's Parrot by Amy Guglielmo, illustrated by Brett Helquist. In the French countryside near blooming lavender fields in a little yellow house lived an artist named Paul Cezanne and his new parrot, Bisou. Bonjour, Bisou, Cezanne said as he fed the parrot a grape. Can you say Cezanne is a great painter, he asked, hoping someday someone would tell him it was true. But the bird just plucked at his feathers and said nothing. For years, Cezanne had struggled as an artist in Paris. While other artists painted portraits of aristocrats and grand scenes from history and mythology, Cezanne de depicted ordinary people in everyday places. While other artists painted flawless details with tiny brushes and delicate strokes, Cezanne preferred thick paint and heavy marks. So when Cezanne submitted his portfolio to the famous Academy des Beaux-Arts, where the most talented students from around the world studied, the professors scoffed. This is too black, that's too flat, and these are rough and unfinished. Cezanne fumed, my hair is longer than my talent. But his friend Monet offered some advice. Go to the country and paint what you see. And so Cezanne packed up his supplies and journeyed south with Bisou, determined to become a truly great painter. With a fresh canvas in his hand, Cezanne wandered through fragrant meadows until he found the perfect view of trees stretching toward the sun. While Monet could paint quickly, finishing a painting in a single day, Cezanne was painstakingly slow. For many weeks, he toiled away on the same canvas, carefully choosing each dab of pigment and measuring each brush stroke. It took over 100 visits to a special hilltop to finish that one scene. And every evening upon his return, the artist presented the parrot with his latest work. Repeat after me, he said as he passed the bird a plum. Cezanne is a great painter. Bisou opened his beak as if to speak, but he just yawned instead. For months, Cezanne labored over just a few paintings. Some took years to complete, some remained unfinished, and some were hurled into the fire. After much consideration, Cezanne chose his best pieces and returned to Paris to apply to the Salon, the official art show of the Academy. When Cezanne toured the school, he thought all the students' work looked the same. Everyone was imitating the famous artists who came before them. But Cezanne didn't care about tradition. He didn't want to follow the rules. He wanted to do something new. The professors balked when they reviewed his submissions. Too dark, too crude, too much paint. Cezanne was devastated. I lack the magnificent richness of color that animates nature, he complained. Use brighter colors, his friend Pissarro suggested. And so Cezanne returned to the country with his parrot, eager to make his paintings come alive with color. He convinced a friend to be his model and instructed him not to move. When the man sneezed, Cezanne had a fit. Sit still, he said, be an apple. The man posed for hours until the sun disappeared and he snored in his chair. He sat for a single portrait over 150 times until one day he didn't come back. And each night, after a long day's work, the artist danced toward Bisou's perch to present his progress. Say Cezanne is a great painter, he begged as he handed Bisou a fig. But the vibrant parrot only fluffed his feathered chest and coughed. Forget it. Forget it. One day, Cezanne received an invitation from his friends in Paris to be in an exhibition with a new group of painters called the Impressionists. Like Cezanne, the Impressionists used loose brushstrokes and daubs of pigment to portray scenes of ordinary people and places. And like Cezanne, the Impressionists had also been rejected by the Academy. On opening night, the people packed the gallery and raved about the art of the Impressionists. Still, Cezanne's work was different. His friends wanted to capture the color and light of a single moment in time. But Cezanne didn't care about painting things exactly how they looked. Even among a group of rebels, Cezanne did not fit in. When the crowd noticed Cezanne's unusual style, they roared with laughter. Ugly, dismal, sloppy. Cezanne poked holes in his canvases and broke his brushes. Luckily, his friend Renoir saved a small watercolor. How does he do it, Renoir marveled. Monet agreed, but Cezanne snapped. You two are making fun of me. When Cezanne returned home, he decided he would ignore the critics and paint what he wanted, how he wanted. He knew people might laugh or say his style was ugly. 
After all, he was painting in a way no one else had done before. Cezanne set out a vase of flowers and dipped his brush into the vivid pigments on his palette. But he worked so slowly that after days of toiling, the flowers drooped and lost their petals. One morning before Cezanne could say hello, Bisou greeted him with a squawk. Bonjour! Now say Cezanne is a great painter, the artist said excitedly as he fed the bird a peach. But Bisou just blinked. Cezanne groaned and arranged a napkin and a dish of fruit on his studio table. The artist worked tirelessly days into nights, only taking breaks to eat and sleep. Then one day, as Cezanne stepped back to admire his finished work, his friend Gauguin dropped in to see his recent pieces. When Cezanne revealed the fresh still life, he had a commo heard a commotion coming from Bisou's cage. Cezanne opened the door and handed to hand Bisou a pair, but the lively parrot flew from the cage and landed on the easel. Bisou whistled, his carmine plume standing up like a crown. Cezanne is a great painter. The artist laughed and handed Bisou an apple. Then he scattered the remaining fruit across the table. Aha, exclaimed Cezanne as he envisioned a masterpiece. The artist dabbed scarlet onto a fresh canvas. He scraped, splashed, and slapped the paint with a knife, smiling. I will astonish Paris with an apple, he declared. And he did. Cezanne is a great painter. The end.